It's been now a full year since I've been running on the Campagnolo Eckhart 13 speed group set on my 3T Exploro. A lot of you guys asked me for feedback in my review. So here it is, my in-depth one year long review of the Campagnolo 13 speed Italian group set. All right, so I wanna give you guys the formal story on why and how did I end up on the Eckhart group set. So when I started my partnership with 3T Bikes, these guys decided to send me over their brand new bike with the group set that I did not request it. I was a bit surprised and I was a bit scared of how I would like going from Shimano GRX to Campagnolo Eckhart, but I gotta say, I'm genuinely surprised. A few key points that I quite don't like about the group set, and I just wanna make sure that you guys know everything from my experience so you can make a purchase of the knowledge that I'm sharing in this video. Watch until the end of this video. So first we need to talk about what differentiates the ACAR group set from the rest of the group set on the market, and it's the 13 speeds. So first of all, why 13 speeds? You have a lot of range for the cassette. So the cassette goes from a nine teeth in the rear to a 42. So this gives you a huge range with 13 speeds. We so have 13 jumps of gears in between. A lot of people out there will tell you that going one by will then give you too much jumps in terms of speed. So then your cadence will never be right. But from my personal experience, I've never had any issues in terms of being in between two gears as some people might say. So being a one by system, so that means no front chain ring, I think a clutch for this derailleur was a must. And I think that Campagnolo did that clutch extremely well. It's very snappy, it's very strong, it keeps the chain in place. And now what we're a full year later, maybe 6,000 kilometers off road for me. And I've never had a single chain drop during all of that time. The front chain ring come in different sizes. In my case, I had the 38 teeth in the front and I felt that 38 with the ratio in the rear was good enough for almost everything. Um, Sometimes I felt that when going very, very steep off road incline, I wish I had just a little bit more of gearing. So maybe. I should have went with the 36 in the front. So that would have paired very well with the 42 in the rear, just to have a good amount of range. In terms of going downhill, going fast, with the 38, I realized that I start to spin out at maybe 60, 65 kilometers an hour. Over that, I just need to get as aero as possible. So in my case, the 38 is perfect for all around usage. Downhill, it's fine. I don't feel like I've never really needed more gear when going downhill. At that point, you should just stop pedaling and get yourself aero rest uh, rather than try to push over 65 on a gravel bike. And now something that scared me the most jumping to Campagnolo, which I also was surprised is the shifting, the way it's designed from the hoods. So as you can tell here, we have a thumb button. At first it can be quite confusing to use when you're coming from Shimano or SRAM, but I quite a lot ended liking that shifter. So I felt that the biggest advantage of that thumb lever is especially going uphill, out of the saddle, standing up. So when you wanna go climb very fast up a climb, it's very accessible with the top of your hand, your thumb to push down and increase the resistance in the back. I felt that on Shimano, when you need to go under the hoods here to go press the button to shift up, it can quite be difficult when you are out of the saddle. And now when I am in the saddle, when I'm trying to be aero and my hands are on top of the bar, I feel that the thumb button was fine, no problem at all. And also in the drops, you kind of need to bend your wrist a little bit more. So if I'm in the saddle here and I really want to reach that thumb button, I just had to break the angle of my wrist a little bit more to go reach the button. And then I can, after that, have a comfortable grip. So that means that you kind of need to think when you want to change speed when you're in the drops, because for myself, my tiny little hands, uh, the button was maybe a quite too much up, but basically on gravel, on very long rides, you are 95% of the time on the top of the hoods. And in my case, I like the way I can reach this button. And now speaking of the left shifter, as you can see, since it's a one by system, there's no buttons. And I have to say it, being my first one by bike, I am genuinely surprised and I really like it. I think the biggest advantage of going one by is that you're never in between that front and rear chain ring. So on my other gravel bike, when I had the two by GRX system, uh, let's say I was coming on top of a hill, there's always this moment where 
you're too much down on the cassette and you need to shift to the big ring. And then you're going to the big ring, you need to shift down from the rear to be able to have a good chain line and to be able to have enough resistance. Being on a one by system, you're always on the right gear. As soon as you go up a hill, you just shift up and shift up and shift up and you get the resistance that you need. And then if it goes down again or up, you can readjust easily without thinking of being on the right front chain ring. So in my case, that's a plus. One by system really works well for gravel and off-road racing. All right, so now while we are speaking about the levers, I want to talk about the braking system. So the brakes, the hydraulic brakes actually from the Campagnolo A-Car group set is very impressive. Coming from a GRX from Shimano, I gotta say I like better the Campagnolo one. I just feel it's a lot stronger and you need less force into your hands to apply pressure to the hydraulic. And the brizen and the brake pads and the disc combo just works really well and I prefer it to the Shimano one. So the brake calipers are actually not made by Campagnolo, but by a company called Magura, which is a world's leading company in hydraulic braking for cars and bicycles. And the build quality of that caliper is way higher than anything else that I've seen on the market. Same goes with the disc. I've never had any overeating issues. I've went down some very, very long climbs uh, off-road with braking constantly, and it never started to slow down less efficiently. So. The brake really evaporate the heat as good as possible, never had any issues, and just a very reliable system for the most important part of a bike, which is safety and your brakes. And now, what about the crank? So I gotta say, it's a very good one. It's made of carbon fiber. I feel that it would be nice if there was an alloy version, so maybe it would bring down the total price of the group set. But in my end, I just had great experience with it because uh, having a light crank really makes a big difference for the total weight of the bike. So this carbon crank works well uh, for myself here. It's 170 mil. And I like the fact that it comes with these little plastic covers at the end here to protect the crank. So if you're pedaling and you're hitting rocks off-road, well, the damage will go to the plastic cover and not to the end of the crank. So what about the chain? Well, I gotta say, it just works. It's very narrow. As you can see here, um, it's very different than any other chains because we have a 13 speed in the back, so the chain needs to be a bit more on the narrow side. But I don't feel that the chain stretch throughout the year. I haven't changed it. It looks very still fine to me. I just had really good maintenance about it. I've cleaned it a lot, bunch of times, made sure it's really always well oiled and it just works well. So the burden bracket is biggest perks, I think is it's very well sealed. So that means no dust, no dirt, no mud will get inside of your bottom bracket part. So then the bearing will last longer and it will just be a lot more efficient. Uh, some of these companies make ceramic bottom brackets for gravel bikes, but I do not believe that if you don't have your personal mechanic, like we, uh, my buddy Adam, that can maintain his bikes all the time, uh, you should go for something that is well sealed uh, because it will last a longer time and you will just have a lot less maintenance on it. And in my case here, I've never serviced the bottom bracket and it still spins freely and it does the job well. Something else I really like about the Eckhart group set is how mechanically the shifting feels. It's like a clap. Every time that I'm shifting, it's just so snappy and you guys will understand here. So as soon as I shift here, the gearing in the back just goes in place. And when the derailleur is well adjusted, clack, 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 clack. It is very, very snappy. That's the word. It's like a clack every time you're shifting, and I quite like that. All right, so I've been talking about this group set in a very positive way throughout this video, but it comes with a few downsides that I want you guys to know that everything that I don't quite like about it, so you guys can make the right decision to buy that group set or not. So first downside of the group set is it's a blessing and a curse, and it's the cassette. I personally don't think I like that 9 to 42 combo. The Eckhart group set has three cassette options, a 9 to 36, which I would not really recommend. You really want that higher gearing. The 9 to 42, which is the one I have, uh, but they also have a 10 to 44. And I kind of personally believe that I would have liked to, uh, in between, between those two. So a 9 to 44, I feel that it would have been a lot better for gravel racing, just more gearing in the back to get up those very steep climbs and the 9T to go at very fast and keep up with the descent. Another downside I haven't talked about is everything is maybe on the slider and more expensive. 
and a bit more difficult to find in your local bike shops. Uh, if you're in an area that bike shops only carry Shimano or SRAM, I maybe wouldn't recommend that because you will have a hard time to find spare parts. You only need to buy online and availability is very limited. Another downside I feel is being such a high range cassette, the clutch is quite harsh. And as I said earlier, the clutch needs to be very tight in for the chain to not drop on the front chain ring. But I feel that comes with a drawback. If I'm just pushing my crank backwards, it really stops the whole thing quickly. And I feel that is because there's a lot of resistance here pushing the chain backwards. So just to give you guys an example here, if I just release the chain pressure just a little bit, now my crank is moving a lot more freely. And now I'm gonna put it back, there's resistance. And I don't have the scientific thing to prove the wattage that this caused, if, how much watts does this cost, but I kind of believe that I might be losing a few watts because of that resistance in terms of the chain. So one more time, you see no tension, the crank easily spins around, and as soon as I release the tension, the crank stop. So that means the whole system is very made tough, but it's maybe the not efficient out there. I wanna give a little comparison here with my GRX derailleur. All right, so we have my old Windspace G2 and it's very dirty. We, we did some cycle cross last week and look at the difference here. So I'm gonna spin the crank. It's really moving. And if I'm releasing tension here, it doesn't change much the resistance here, just a little bit, but not as much as the Eckhart system. So this kind of play games in my head that am I letting watts on the table because of the Campagnolo group set? I don't know. And now I want to talk about one downside I've realized from those levers. So in terms of ergonomics, it's very good. But I feel like the rubber they use to make these hoods are very harsh. And it's kind of like a very, very light sandpaper. So in my case, what I've experienced is if I don't ride with gloves on, I will get blisters on the on my hand. So I will have blisters here or blisters here on the other side. Um, so if you look at my left hand here, so if I don't have gloves, blisters will go around this area. So on the outside of the end, it will rub around here and it is just very uncomfortable. But personally, in my case, I tend to always ride with gloves on the gravel, especially it kind of releases a little bit of the pressure of the terrain. But sometimes when I'm riding, I forget my gloves and then I get home with very small blisters on the end. And if I would have ride longer, those blisters can turn into an injury. So now let's talk about maybe that one last downside of the group set and it's the pricing. I believe that $2,500 for this full group set is quite expensive because it's mechanical and it's a one by system. That's two points that usually it should bring the price lower. Uh, but in this case, because the group set is so advanced, the carbon cranks, the full machine cassette and all of that, that brings the price tag up. And I believe that at that price, you can get a wireless group set from SRAM or Shimano. And I just have a hard time justify the price point. Personally, since I've, I'm lucky I haven't paid for that group set, it's 3T that provided the bike with, I am totally happy with it. Uh, I don't feel any problems that uh, made me want to go back to Shimano. I am more than happy to stay with Campagnolo. But if money is an issue for you for buying a bike and building your next gravel off-road group set, well, I do believe there's better option in terms of pricing. So guys, this is pretty much it for my overview of the Campagnolo Eckhar group set. Uh, if you're wondering what wheels I am running is the Lund Grapid wheels. So these are very affordable gravel wheels from Windspace. You guys have seen 3T Exploro. Uh, it's been one hell of a bike. I like it. It's very fast. In terms of tires, I've pretty much ran all seasons on Pirelli 40 mil uh, Cinturato H. Uh, these works well. And I ride my bike with a quad lock because it's very nice to have your phone accessible all the time. All right, guys, so if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget, leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you aren't already. And my name is Charles, and I will see you on the road or into the next video. Peace.